DCP Player Free. Get it now from digital.net.au. Hi, this is James Gardner of the Sydney Tech Geek, and today I'm with Theo. This is the last day of the show, and it's a product I really wanted to show uh, before I finish the show because it's one of the little products that Barco released out of the myriad of products that they did that slid under the radar but it is probably, in terms of technically, one of the most technically advanced products that they've released in a long time. Uh, the integration, the vertical integration with their projectors, and all the aspects of what a cinema needs to do with video on the screen, this product is going there faster than anywhere else. So I'm going to talk to Theo, and so how did you come up with this product so quickly? Like this is a fourth generation uh, media block, and everyone's just sort of getting out of the, the third. How, what, what, what made you come along so quickly with this uh, generation of media block for cinema? Well, um, what we're doing here is, you know, we thought about uh, integrating the, you know, the projector electronics together with the media blocks. So, because it just made sense, right? I yes, mean, it does. Uh, th there, there are a number of things behind this. There's the concept of unity, you know, uniting the. Uh, uh, I would say, you know, for the geeks, the ICP side That's right. and, and the media block. And that has a number of advantages, right? I mean, uh, first advantage is that they're probably, you know, less boxes. So it makes it, you know, more easy to integrate reliable hardware. That's right. And we are very much about the simplicity concept. So That's right. we wanted um, to have it easy to use both for the projectionist and for the service technicians, for the, for the integrators. Mm. Um, and the last thing is that um, because it's, you know, united, essentially because we have the cinema electronics together with the media block part, uh, we're breaking some of the barriers that were thought were existing into, um, uh, in, into the cinema projectors. So for instance, you know, um, uh, cinema projectors today in 4K are limited to go only to 24 frames per second. Um, thanks to breaking this barrier, uh, this, this guy here is going up to uh, 60 frames per second, right? So we can do 4K 3D or we can run 4K 60. Um, so that means 4K 3D 60, that means 4K at 120 frames a second? So no, what we're talking about here is 4K 3D the way we're doing 2K 3D, so that would be 24, 24 per eye or 30 per eye if there are any movies at, at that frame rate. Um, or into in, into 2D, uh, 60 frames per second, and that and brings up a quite yeah. quite a new language. I mean, we've done some uh, uh, some interesting uh, tests with that. Uh, we also see the creative people being very excited. It gives it a new look, um, a lot smoother. So essentially, we're really super excited about you know creating, I would say, a new canvas and new paint brushes, yes, yes. so that the you know the creative people can can play uh, can play with it. And and I'm really actually very, I'm really looking forward to see what what people are going to do with that. I am too. Now, I want to go over some of the more technical sides of yep. it, because Cine Tech Geek, let's get technical. <laughs> let's get now, the geek. ICP yeah. is no longer needed. This means that Barco or TI is, has nothing to do with this device, it's completely Barco created. So the ICP has been implemented in this via Barco. Correct. And that, doing that has allowed them to implement a number of very nice features or capabilities that aren't uh, available in the old or the pre-generation to this media blocks or uh, media uh, IMBs. And one of the ones I really like about it is that pretty much these are now frame independent, frame rate independent on the SPL or the, or the, or the, or the playlist timeline. You can mix, from my understanding, 24, 60, blah, 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 Correct. and it is pretty much seamless. The media block doesn't have to even be told what frame rate's going to be going next. It just deals with it on the run, and it's just seamless and instant. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, that's right. It knows it. And also on technologies that, that allow, uh, I would say, fast 3D switching. Yes. Like, for instance, on our laser projector. This is powering our Xenon projectors, but it also powers a laser projector. Yes. Um, so that allows also for 2D to 3D switching. Yes. Because there it's very easy. You know, on, on, the, on the Barco 6P laser, yes. uh, you can essentially switch from 2D to 3D mode almost instantly. That's right. That's, that's really good. So you're improving the quality of your performance because you can now 
jump between the different formats there's all this new simty frameworks etc coming along and now it's not such an issue that you're going to be marrying different frame rates with different frame rates so that's a really big advantage it's only possible because the icp is now in is part of the solution okay now that's good but now let's move on to the, the other interesting aspect of it yeah. um, is the alternative content inputs. This is the most advanced alternative content inputs currently available. We've got the two um, display ports here. Yeah, that's right. The two 3G SDIs, and currently the 1.4B HDMI is, what, what version Eight. is 1.48? Now, the nice thing about this, there's two nice things about this. Firstly, the SDI and the HDMI is on a daughter board and that'll allow us to upgrade it, correct? Yeah, so we really wanted to, to make a product that is, um, I would say, at the same time working, you know, um, is um, future-proof, so yes. work, working in time. It was one of the promises of the Barco Series 2 projectors to become, you know, to be modular and to be upgradable and future-proof. I think this is probably the best example. This works on all Series 2 projectors. Um, so we want to make it work long term. So that I would say the the ICP and media block part uh, is um, uh, is there for the longer term. I mean the standards are evolving less fast, and we've added this daughter board uh, on top of it, on which we have uh, the more uh, alternative content, which is a, uh, a, I would even call it new content, if okay. I may, uh, um, which is evolving faster. So that 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 you know allows us to, to, to have it a bit more open in yes. terms of a hardware side. And, and we'll just say, talk about that for a sec because it's it's very, if you if you follow um, the world of um, digital video, etc. and post, etc., you would know that we have the 6 gigabit or 6 uh, 6G SDI ports coming online now, it's becoming more common, and also HDMI version 2 which allows for the 60 frame um, 4K and other aspects which are very hot topics at NAB etc. So those new hot topic or buzzwords will be able to be supported in this device when they become available or those chips are available to be put into those sort of devices. But the other really hot issue with this is these two display ports and you tell us exactly what can we do with these display ports which is really of very importance to the post industry. Well. Um I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm a tech geek myself, so I yeah. couldn't I couldn't you know pre 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 prevent us from from looking into how to how to make that really future proof. That's so right. We not only made uh, the the DCPs to run off the hard drives in 4K at 60 frames per second and at very high bit rates. We thought it would be really cool to also have the two display ports here that can support uh, 4K 60 frames per second and compressed uh, in 444. Yeah, fantastic. Talk about. Um, so if you've got a 4K um, Barco projector, you could use um, this media block to give you full DCI playback cap capability in QC, plus you could be plugging it into a Resolve or other high-end production solution, and you can be seeing it lossless on the screen. Uh, and with this DisplayPort scenario, very cost-effective, very future-proof, and very now. So that's, uh, like, talk about, that's really good. I'm very impressed with uh, that you went down that path because I've always been troubled by the solutions not being you know, like the post solution and the DCI Q QC solution have always been a little bit uh, not sub not supporting well either side so it always oh so I'll need a projector for doing this and I'll need a projector for doing that well now that the projector with this media block can pretty much do both and that is a that is technically this is you know you should be proud of that that's a good solution you're the first to do it and that's really good. I'm really impressed with this with this media block. Thanks. So, so kudos to our technical team. That's absolutely. <laughs> now a few other little technical issues you spoke about before. Um, the new you've got the new standard is 500 for the DCPs, but these go to 650 now due to the um, 4K 60 frame 2D capability. So we have to up the up the bit rate to yeah. match the quality, and that's 650, correct? Yeah, so what we've done here, I mean, um, there is the DCI, um, I would say, recommendation on, on, the, on the higher frame rate. So they were recommending uh, 4K at 48, 4K at 60. We're supporting both of that. I think yes. we're, we're, we're the first ones to support that. Um, and uh, also DCI is, recommended five, is recommending 500 megabits per second. Uh, we thought that we could, um, uh, you know, 
do at least that and, and, and exceed it. The rationale on the 625 is that if you're having, if you're having you know, um, 250 at 24 frames per second, you want to keep the same frame quality yes. when you're upping your, your, your frame rate. So that's, right. that's why we've, you know, we've spec to be at least 625. Yeah, so you basically you've matched the quality expectation for those bit rate, for, that, for those yeah. image sizes yeah. and that's the new bit rate to, to match right. that. Right. Yeah. That was the rationale behind it. That's right. It's a perfectly good rationale. Um, now, uh, of course, just a few other quick little things. Uh, USB 3. So, uh, so USB importing into your media block. It's been a very big pain in the industry. Yeah. Um, but if you do have a DCP, if you're, got, you're a, a film festival person and you're bringing your film in, you've made it somewhere and you're using a cheaper USB 3 drive, you can ingest this into this media block just as fast as the good old CIU data port sort of caddy drives. Is that, 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 that'd be, that would be right, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the, the new CRU ones, they're all USB 3. No, yeah, but I, I did an interview with them again this year and it's quite okay. interesting to say, see that the, um, because most, you know, we've done most of the uh, installation and most of the machines out there support the um, CRU um, caddy system yes. and therefore that's actually where the industry has gone and what most people purchase yep. Yep. but yep. it's not what if I want to do this cost effectively mm -hmm. I might more likely get a USB 3 drive because right. it's it'll cost a fraction of that drive but we've got a legacy out there now I think the industry should go to USB 3 yep. but we have so many of the older systems there that have just been installed we're going to be um, staying with those um, crew drives as they're called for, for quite some time but it's good to see that you're already capable with, with what we expect the trend for DC distribution should be and that's USB 3. Yeah. We already see that in Europe by the way I mean I see quite some quite some hard some USB 3 hard drives being shipped to uh, to theaters in Europe. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I suppose I've, we've, I think we've done the video long enough there's a lot of other uh, I've spoken to Theo about some, a lot of little other some other features in this device which are yet to be um, yet to be taken advantage of and I'm sure we'll have more time to make more videos about them at a later date absolutely and uh, and I'm telling you that it, it'll just blow your mind when you see some of these other, other video uh, other capabilities that it will have in the near future once they've uh, um, sort of gotten this out there and matured it a little bit in this new product but the last thing we need to mention before we go because I will do another video on this product because this has a completely new user interface as well yeah and tell us a little bit about that before we go well what we wanted here is is you know to to make things simple uh, for the projectionists and for the service technicians so they have different requirements um, so communicator we've expanded that uh, adding some 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 basically a tab to to configure this part of the projector um, and the projection is now they have their own dedicated user interface. Uh, we have two versions, we call it Commander, and there are two versions of Commander. We have Commander that works on the touch panel controller as communicator, supporting the exhibit projectors in the field and those that are gonna be used, the, 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 the TPC in the future. Um, and we have a web version of, uh, of Barco Commander that we call Web Commander. Um, that runs a very neat HTML5 uh, uh, user interface, which works on, on pretty much any um, any platform could be your laptop, could be a tablet. Works great with uh, you know iOS, Androids. Uh, it's also very very neat with the um, uh, Barco Cinemate uh, application. It's a free app that you can download on the um, uh, iOS app or on you know on on, on the Google um, Google Play. Yeah, but, but I'm I'm quite bullish about this implementation because I. As someone who um, studies the trends and how we are moving from laptops to tablets to phones, etc., this is a really good way to move because now you can have any like any of device like that without having to download any software. You can just point it at this device and you can get the control you need to do what you need to do. So if you own a cinema and you are branching out into these new ways to run your cinema, to manage your cinema using these new technologies and the new understanding how everyone's learning how to use tablets and phones to control things, well, it's seamless. You just point it at the device. There's no upgradability of the software because all that is baked into the web page and every device going from now going forward you know will work 
with the HTML5 implementation of the web page. Yeah. And that's a very big saving for your IT infrastructure and, and managing your, your movement into this era. So it's, it's the right way to do it. So that's another good decision, in my opinion, that Darko has gone down here. So anyway, so we'll leave it with that. I'll come up with a video and we'll do a little quick video on how this interface works in another video. But thank you. And what's the name of the product range again? Um, it's called Barco Alchemy. The Barco Alchemy. So there you go. And it probably deserves that name because it's, it can be made into anything. <laughs> and, and you can have it with the new Barco projectors and you can have it with the uh, existing Barco Series 2 projectors in the field. All of them are retrofitable. Okay, there's one surprise question. Will it work in other brand projectors? It's not the um, aim of. In, it's yeah. not the aim. Um, so, technically, maybe I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Theo. You're very welcome. This is James Gardner at CinemaCon 2014. Bye for now.